Hello everybody and welcome to yet another tutorial of mine for Isle to Stone with Cliffs of Dover. This time around covering the Junkers 87 Stuka, uh, which is currently the only flyable dive bomber in the sim. Um, some of my, you might say, well the Junkers 88 also has dive brakes. But um, to be honest that doesn't really count so much as a dive bomber because it simply cannot be used. Uh, in the same way and fashion as the Junkers 87 uh, because it's an entirely different design and a multi-role aircraft. The, the Stuka is very much purpose designed and it cannot really perform in a lot of other roles than the ones it was designed for, that is dive bombing uh, and uh, high precision bomb drops from high altitude. Um, it is also a very iconic aircraft in that it is very recognizable and is definitely up there with other aircraft such as the Messerschmitt B-49, the Supermarine Spitfire and the North American P-51 Mustang and it is uh, pretty much the symbol for the German Blitzkrieg uh, because it paved the way for the German Panzer divisions across Europe in uh, the Western campaign early in the Second World War. Uh, and it's, it is also one of the longest serving aircraft of the Ger German Luftwaffe because it fought uh, from the Spanish Civil War right up to the end uh, of the Second World War, even uh, if just in, uh, in secondary roles. Um, and uh, speaking uh, of the service life, I'm going to talk just a little bit about its uh, historical background and the de design. So it first saw action as mentioned already in the Spanish Civil War and at the time it was deemed a top secret aircraft. Um, the Spanish allies of the German Legion Condor weren't uh, allowed anywhere around the aircraft, uh, even less flying one, uh, because the German uh, high command uh, recognized that this aircraft would play a very significant role in the um, in case of a war for the German war strategy which was basically um, oriented around tactical interdiction and just supporting the advances of the German ground forces. Um, the Stuka as many other dive bombers is by design a very very bulky aircraft and creates a lot of drag and that is, that is actually on purpose if you have a look at other typical dive bombers uh, because uh, they need to be bulky and uh, unaerodynamic uh, for them to be used in a vertical dive bombing run um, because the aircraft shouldn't pick up a lot of speed, uh, otherwise it will very quickly accumulate speed and um, reach its structural limitations. Um, the advantage of a dive bomber is that it can, with a relatively small payload, um, bomb a uh, point target with very high accuracy for the time. Um, ordinary level bombers have a much lower uh, accuracy for the bomb drop simply because of the way the bombs are delivered. They will um, arc down and spread themselves over a relatively large area whereas with the Stuka you can pretty much when perfectly flown you can pinpoint your target. You can uh, put your bombs directly on target and maximize the effect of your payload. But of course the design of the Stuka comes at a price. Being very bulky and uh, with poor aerodynamics means that this aircraft is relatively slow. It can be caught by pretty much any modern fighter of its day. Um, the only aircraft that it might actually be able to outrun are biplanes and some of the very early uh, pre-war monoplane fighters. But everything else whether it's Messerschmitt, Hurricane or Spitfire, it will run this aircraft down with relative ease. Uh, there is no competition right there. So this is probably its main shortcoming. It is not fast, it cannot disengage from a fight when it's engaged. So it has to rely 
on fighter escorts and cover otherwise it's pretty much dead meat um, the more experienced pilots might actually uh, one or the other time uh, get out of a tricky situation by employing this aircraft's uh, very good turning abilities. Having huge wings and a very low wing loading as a result means that this aircraft turns very well and many a red pilot in a hurricane or spitfire uh, heavily underestimates the turning capability of the Stuka uh, only to find out the hard way that in a Slow, low altitude, uh, low speed turning fight, the Stuka can actually uh, get around on the tail of an enemy and spray around uh, with its uh, rifle caliber machine guns and it just takes a hit in the irradiator and the aircraft that has been shot up by the Stuka will eventually go down. Um, so the worst thing when flying against the Stuka is uh, to drop down to its altitude and to its energy state and start a turn fight because that's actually uh, playing uh, the Stuka's game. So whenever you are um, attacking a Stuka you should go vertical against it because it does not stand any chance in that sort of fight. It doesn't have the necessary speed horizontally to pull up into a vertical uh, fight and go after other aircraft. The only thing it can do pretty well is turn tightly and it's also kind of uh, restricted in its rolling ability and can be out uh, performed and maneuvered in a scissors fight with relative ease. Okay this is um, just some basic information on the aircraft so I am going to jump right into the cup uh, cockpit with you and show you how to start up the engine, get this thing running and off the ground. Okay, so we are now in the cockpit of the Junkers 87 Stuka and this is a fairly tight cockpit um, similar to the single engine fighters and it's also comparable in workload and ease of handling. So. Uh, the Stuka is probably the easiest to fly bomber aircraft in the sim. Um, much easier than the uh, Junkers 88 and Heinkel 111 and also easier than the 110 where you have to monitor and manage two engines at the same time. And the takeoff procedure in this is pretty straightforward. First thing to do is open the fuel cock which is down here. You can either do that by clicking on it, or I've actually set up a hotkey, which I use on each aircraft. Um, and then you can already start the engine. So it should spin into life, and we do not open the radiators yet, because we want the engine to warm up on the ground first. Uh, what you need in terms of temperatures is at least 40 degrees uh, water, and 30 degrees oil. So I'm applying a little bit of uh, thrust here, 15%, you can go as high as 20 if you like. I'm staying with 15 here and it should rise in temperature fairly quickly. In the meantime I'm going to engage the gun sight. Okay, we have 30 oil and now 40 water and I am going to open the radiators fully now. This is what you should do in any aircraft. Uh, first warm up and then uh, when the engine is warmed up and you are sitting still on the ground always open the radiators fully because you don't have any airflow to cool the engine So and you don't want to wreck your engine before you've actually even uh, gotten to do any serious flying. Okay, we have the runway straight ahead of us here. And as I said, this aircraft is pretty straightforward. You don't have to do a lot to get it to fly and keep it flying. So once you've arranged on the runway, we apply full throttle. We apply a little bit of right rudder. And what you have to do also is immediately manage your 
engine revolutions. I am setting my prop pitch back to 80% and when we've taken off I'm going to talk about the engine limitations. Okay, so we are now in the air. So what kind of engine settings can you actually use in this aircraft? Um, there are three noteworthy engine settings. There is the unlimited uh, setting or in German Dauerleistung. Um, this is 1.1 ATA uh, that's the uh, engine boost which you can see down here. So 1.1 ATA and 2200 RPM. That is um, continuous power. You can run the aircraft in this power setting for pretty much forever. Um, the next noteworthy setting is the cruise setting which is 1.15 ATA and uh, also 2200 or 2300 RPM and the maximum permittable boost but that's only for around one minute is 1.3 to 1.35 ATA and 2300 RPM I recommend you never, never, never go above 2300 RPM because that will wreck the engine very quickly. The aircraft is more sensitive in regards to RPM than it is to in regards to boost level. So when in doubt, rather lower the RPMs uh, than the ATA. 2200 RPM is very safe. You can run this aircraft on higher boost at uh, 2200 RPM on uh, for extended periods of time without actually wrecking the engine. Okay, so we are now safely in the air, everything's running smoothly. Um, you can of course now adjust your radiators um, when the engine is sufficiently cool, that is your personal preference. And as I'm going to uh, dive bomb some vehicles. I'm going to climb the Stuka up to 3000 meters and show you how this is done. Um, just one note about the navigation in the Stuka. You, don't, you do not have a level autopilot like you have in the uh, larger bombers and the 110. You have to do your flying manually but you do have uh, rudder and elevator trim and when properly trimmed this aircraft will go perfectly straight so it is a very nice handling aircraft and very pilot friendly okay so as said i am going to uh, climb up now of uh, course during your climb you can actually adjust uh, the supercharger you can set this uh, you can adjust this on the fly as uh, needed. Just watch your uh, ATA gauge, which uh, which level of the supercharger is better for you. Um, there should be a step in supercharger at about uh, one and a half, two thousand meters, and then when you switch, yeah, you can see this right here. First stage second stage. So this is where you need to uh, switch the um, supercharger at about 1.5 kilometers. Um, okay, so I'm now going to climb up and let's see how you actually dive bomb in this thing. Okay, I am slowly but surely reaching my desired altitude in the Stuka, which is actually a fairly well climbing aircraft, especially for a bomber. Uh, so I'm going to take the time, or use the time, and explain some more about the actual dive bombing process. Before we bomb, of course, we have to arm the bombs first. And what is also uh, very important to note is um, when you when you go into the dive, you have to use the dive brakes that come with the aircraft, and these are coupled to an automatic recovery system, which is going to recover the aircraft from its dive automatically without the input from the pilot uh, at, at a set altitude and you have to uh, map that in 
on your for your aircraft. Uh, this is by default set to 750 meters. If you want this to be lower, you uh, can set this to a lower value. Um, if you want this to be higher, uh, you can set this to a higher value. The higher you go with the recovery altitude, of course, the more difficult it will become for you to actually uh, precisely hit your target, but it might be more uh, secure when there's lots of AAA around. Um, of, uh, and on the other hand, if you set it this to a very low value, you might have a higher precision on target, but you also have to take into account the uh, your surroundings. So if the if you are bombing a very hilly part of a landscape uh, that might be uh, situated higher than the rest of the landscape, uh, you have to take that into account in order not to risk and run into the landscape. It would really suck if you dive down only to ram yourself into the ground. So better play this out a little safer and pull it uh, correctly rather than um, just uh, ramming yourself into the ground. By the way, here is also a very nice feature of the Stuka. If you interact with this uh, wheel here, you can actually open up a window on the bottom floor of the Stuka and this will provide you with uh, a limited sight of uh, the landscape below you. Um, I have now selected bomb slot 1, which is the centerline rack. I've taken a fi uh, 500 kilogram bomb um, and I'm going to bomb uh, a column of static vehicles that I've set up near the airfield that we took off from. I just have to find them again. Uh, where are they again? <laughs> I might be right above them currently. Um, so, where are they? Oh yeah, okay, I've found the targets again, they are right here, and what I'm going to do is I am going for the dive bombing process, I'm going to idle the engine and also take the prop pitch almost the entire way back, maybe 10%, and once we are above the target you wing over and engage the air brakes. So the dive brakes, the air brakes are now in. The Jericho trumpets are working and you now align your sight with the target as best as you can. And as said, the aircraft will recover at the preset altitude, which is now 750 meters, and once you've pulled out, um, you disengage the air brakes, you power up again, and we should have our bomb on target. Yes, perfect explosion. Okay, so um, the Stuka also has some wing-mounted bombs. I've taken uh, four SC-50 kilogram bombs and we're also going to put them on the remaining aircraft. Um, unfortunately, other than with like the 109 ml fighter bombers, you cannot drop them singly. They will always be dropped as an entire group. So... And of course we also have our machine guns that we can also use to strafe ground targets. 
But of course, the Stuka being a very slow aircraft, you should not linger too long over ground targets. First of all, because of the fighters that might be attracted by a lot of burning ground targets, and of course, because the AAA is going to have a field day shooting at such a uh, slow aircraft. Okay, we got one truck. Uh, of course, we are just shooting 7.92 millimeter ammunition, so this is only going to affect uh, soft targets. You're not going to go get through any tanks with this, so you have to keep that in mind. And of course, you can also shoot AAA guns, but I would not recommend you go after AAA in the Stuka. Okay, I'm going to make one more pass and then we're going to have a look at the landing in the Stuka. Okay, I got the truck burning as well and we are satisfied. Both groups are largely, for the most part, on fire. So, the last point of today's tutorial is how do you actually land this thing? And again, the Stuka being such a very nicely handling aircraft, this is not much of a challenge if you've flown one of the other aircraft before in Cliffs of Dover. Um, the Stuka, the, the big up, uh, advantage of its draggy and um, lift creating design is well that it has a very low wing loading so it's going to create lots and lots of lift even at slow speeds and this comes in very handy when you want to land this is not uh, as it's far more easier to land than say a Junkers 88 which has a very high landing speed and can be a handful because uh, when you come in too slow for your landing you will either drop too fast or uh, pretty much fall out of the sky right away. Okay, I am going to drop down the flaps, which is not a necessity, especially when you are uh, rid of your bombs, but uh, you can uh, do that anyways. Why not? Okay, um, landing speed, I advise you to come in at about 140 to 150 kilometers per hour. The engine torque might at some point also uh, create a little bit of a problem here and there. Uh, but you can flare out very nicely in the Stuka. Okay, so that was a fairly good landing. Could have been better, but it, uh, it shows you how to land this thing. You can land this thing very aggressively also if you're coming in from a high altitude. Just slip down. Uh, and you will uh, get rid of altitude and speed very quickly. And from here on we can see the ground targets we just bombed. Mission successful. Okay. So. I hope this solves most of the, or the most important questions regarding the Stuka. Um, you should now be able to uh, fly this aircraft and do successful dive bombing missions. Of course, you do not necessarily have to dive bomb. You can even you can also fly this low level and uh, skip bomb, but your chances of survival in that kind of flight are much reduced because they're just such a sl slow and easy target for anybody. Also, I would not recommend to take this aircraft out with the sole purpose of dogfighting uh, because while it can turn fight you should not rely on it because the only way out for Stuka is do or die you, so either you come out as the victor or you are being clobbered to death and for the majority of your flights it will uh, end up fatally so I hope this video was useful to you and I am 
probably going to make a tutorial for the remaining German uh, aircraft in our two cliffs of Dover, so the Heinkel 111 and the Junkers 88 at some point. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next videos.